I've only been to CERN a couple of times, but on each occasion I've always been very impressed by it and the opportunities it provides. For me, this meeting has been particularly special because it's evolved around Etienne Pardieu's 65th birthday and because Etienne works in an area of mathematics that gets me particularly excited. So the sort of mathematics I really like is mathematics that has a clear fundamental core of abstraction and understanding, but also absolutely invades the real world and engages with tractable real world problems. And nonlinear filtering, which was where Etienne started his career and where I've also done some work, um, it's just one of those areas. It's easy to explain in layman language what it's about. The basic principle is that you have some system you're interested in. It could be the economy, it could be a helicopter, and you want to monitor its behaviour. Maybe because actually after that you're going to make decisions about what you're going to do. But in most real-world situations, you can't exactly monitor it. You can only make partial observations. <clears throat> and nonlinear filtering, or what it's now called 20 years later, data assimilation, is all about trying to put together an underlying mathematical model that tells you how things should evolve with real-world data that tells you how it is evolving and trying to put those together to get a better picture than you would otherwise achieve. A good example of this that people are probably familiar with is weather forecasting. <clears throat> in weather forecasting there is a sense in which we know what to do. We understand the mathematical models for how the uh, atmosphere evolves. But on the other hand it's a very chaotic situation. So this famous butterfly thing that if you start even a fraction differently you'll end up somewhere else. And so the trick is how you put together real-world data observations, satellites, um, things like that, with the underlying mathematical model, which is actually a deterministic model, and try and combine these two sets of information to produce a, a clearer output and recommendations for what the weather is going to do in the next couple of days. At one end of this, you have a very abstract theory of Markov chains and Markov processes. At the other end, you have satellite measurements and people complaining if you do not adequately predict what happens. Um, now, I don't want to suggest that we fully resolve this one. This is actually a challenge that is still ongoing. But the underlying methodology has in has developed enormously over the last 30 or 40 years. And that brings me, I suppose, to another point. I think nonlinear filtering is a good example of a, of a question that's genuinely of importance uh, across an enormous spectrum. But the progress has come because mathematicians collaborate. And that's why conferences like this conference are so important, because what we do is abstract and often quite difficult to communicate and to get our understanding to progress we have to think quietly and kick ourselves for being stupid but on the other hand we also have to communicate with each other and understand other people's ways of looking at things and integrate these together into our fairly precise and rigorous frameworks it's a challenge to understand one another it's not straightforward you go to lectures and believe it or not, even experienced people do not understand what's being said in detail. They have to get the general impression and if it seems interesting, go back and look at it later. So meetings like this one here in CERN and other institutions around the world are really very important to developing our subjects. My own area is stochastic analysis. I, I trained and for most of my career have been really interested in understanding high dimensional random phenomena. The noise, the fluctuations, the um, uncertainty that one experiences. What is risk? 
how do you model it? But not just what is risk in a superficial one number meaning, but how do you capture the fact that events, complex events, can evolve and unravel in different ways? So one of my mathematical objectives at the current time, which has grown gradually as we built up experience, is to find the language that will adequately describe a complex evolving system and allow us to use that description to predict the most important impact that it can have. It's normal when you have random data for it to be somehow noisy, very oscillatory on fine scales. If you try and articulate and record this noisy data in a classical way, you end up with massive data. I'm sure that you've heard of the idea of big data. Um, what I am interested in, which in part is what this theory that I'm associated with, with colleagues called rough path theory, is trying to understand these complex data streams, but distill from them the critical features of this stream that impact on how things, how other systems that it interacts with evolve. If we were to look at an evolving financial data set, a financial data set is actually normally rather complicated. There's a vast amount of high frequency information and low frequency information. There are several assets, there's order books, there's buy orders, sell orders, limit orders, icebergs, a whole range of complex features. It's interesting to ask oneself, what are the key features I need to extract from that series if I want to understand how an investment strategy of your pension fund might actually evolve? Um, Obviously I could store everything and run everything, but that isn't the understanding. The understanding comes from understanding the salient features of the underlying assets or system and sort of summarising it just through those, a sort of equivalent of sound compression. Extracting the most important features and then reusing just those. Now that's actually something that I am interested in in the financial sector because I'm the director of an interdisciplinary institute um, involving six departments, mathematicians, computer scientists, engineers, statisticians, business school, economists. And I am really interested in using this sort of novel mathematics to discuss that sort of area. But maybe to show you how horizontal these ideas are, it would be just as interesting to apply them in the context of an earthquake. To give you a conceptual and, of course, rather awful, terrible example, earthquakes can have devastating consequences. I mean, we saw in the Japanese earthquake, you know, huge devastation. Now, including the near destruction of the nuclear um, facility. But now, one quite interesting thing is if I wanted to understand that devastation, or well, not that devastation, the likely consequences of the Earth movements, I need some way to abstract, model and describe the highly oscillatory features of this earthquake. And although I've not been able to do it, I would love to apply the methodology that I have through these signatures, which is this transform from noisy oscillatory data into its effects to this system. And what one would imagine is that every point in the ground experiences a sort of oscillation and provides a trajectory. And then what one would hope if I could get resources and time to do it, I would love to do this, um, is that one could analyse this oscillatory data if one describes it using this language 
of signatures, one would not expect it to be a signatory anymore. In fact, what one would expect is that over the surface of, say, the country that, where the earthquake happened, one would see relatively steady variability in these coefficients. So one would expect that there would be a very high degree of correlation between damage to buildings and so on and the behaviour of these terms in the signature. Um, it doesn't exactly tell you what to do, but if one did enough work, one could certainly map out a pathway which might lead one to better simulations and a better understanding of what features were important in these simulations if one was going to create safer buildings and so on. But it's fascinating to me that the same maths can interact with sort of the behaviour of investment strategies in the stock exchange and the understanding of much of physical dynamical systems like, for example, um, earthquakes.